All right, what's up everybody, BQ here. This is the Impact Lounge, and this is the uh, very first of a series I'm gonna do with a few different fans who were at Bound for Glory. It's gonna be called My Bound for Glory Experience. And uh, when I did this a couple months ago with the Impact Live over in New York, it was uh, very, very popular. So I wanted to do something real similar with Bound for Glory so that you people, you folks, can know exactly what Bound for Glory and the week of tapings and the VIP experience and all that was really like, don't listen to the dirt sheets, don't don't worry about the websites and the blogs and the podcasts and everything. We're talking to people who are actually there. So first up to bat, I got Miguel. You're going to know Miguel if you're on social media following Impact Wrestling, but he was, he was the one holding up the sign saying, I traveled, what was it, like 1,580 miles or something like that? Negative eighteen hundred miles. Okay, <laughs> I, knew, I knew there was an eight in there. That's all I knew. So, <laughs> so you stayed. Uh, so that, what was that? Oh, I was just saying it was actually one thousand eight hundred and fifty miles to be exact. Okay, so yeah, his counting, his counting. Right. Yeah, I knew there was an eight and five in there. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, you know, you, I know you got a little hate on social media. People thought you were an employee or something like that. Someone paid to be there. An actor. An actor. Yeah, the the hate I have experienced was unbelievable. So I can only imagine what kind of uh, hate the Impact wrestlers get compared to my few days of hate that I've, I've received. It's been crazy. Isn't it sad that it's not just okay to be an Impact Wrestling fan and to travel to go see it? I mean, it's actually really sad. It's It's so sad that people take the time out of their day to bash someone that they saw on TV and make up a story saying that I specifically was paid to be there or I specifically was an actor to be there or just to go out of their way to just say anything negative about a person they've never even met. It, it's mind boggling to me, which just tells me that these fucking losers have nothing better to do but freaking Twitter fingers all day and write stuff to make themselves feel better they're just mad because they couldn't afford the pay-per-view i mean not everybody has the luxury of staying home all day and playing around the on the internet for real and it, i man twitter i was not gonna say nothing but i just kind of was snapping back and just going in on them and i just didn't care because I'm tired of people always coming after Impact. I'm tired of everyone always talking shit about Impact and always trying to compare Impact versus WWE, and they're not the same. So why even compare the two? It's unfortunate. Um, my personal opinion is that a lot of the fans are not happy with the current product that they watch. So when they see people enjoying other products, they get they get upset. Um, that's what happens, and yeah, it happens in sports and. Um, everyday life, to be honest, it's, it just happens with wrestling as well. But let's talk about uh, your Bound for Glory experience. And you were there for Bound for Glory and then the night of tapings afterwards. Am I correct? Yes. And you flew from where? I flew. So I live in the state of Colorado, but my city is Colorado Springs. So I had to drive two hours to the capital, which is Denver, to fly from Denver to Toronto then Toronto to Ottawa. And then when I came back from Ottawa to Toronto, Toronto to Denver, then drive the two hours back to Colorado Springs. It was a long trip. Wow, hell of a trip, you know. And I thought it was long when I used to drive seven hours to the impact zone. So Ugh. that's a that's a hell of a trip right there. So you did the backstage pass experience, right? So there was the VIP package and then there was like the backstage pass, which was a little something extra. So that was like a $500 package. That's what you did. Yeah. So I got the $500 package. So there was two VIPs. One was a 200, one was a 500. And I believe the 200 was like, um, guaranteed floor seats. You get a meet and greet every night after the show, um, take pictures and autographs. And, um, I think, a ticket to Bound for Glory, and then uh, two tickets to the tapings. And then the $500 package was you get to have a dinner with the wrestlers, and then you can have a Q&A session with the wrestlers, and then Rosemary paints your face with her whole Rosemary face paint gimmick. 
And then they gave us a specific uh, Bound for Glory t-shirt with a swag bag that had the Bound for Glory logo on the bag. Um, they gave us those coffee mugs that they sell on the website. The fidget spinners, they gave us like five or six DVDs. They gave us a uh, Gail Kim like poster, um, a banner. And then they gave us the official Bound for Glory poster for the people to sign for us. And then, of course, we get the nightly meet and greet as well and the Bound for Glory ticket and the taping tickets. Awesome. So you were right there in the front, saw you at Bound for Glory, saw you last night on Impact as well. Very, very cool. Nice. So um, let's talk about first a little bit about um, the Q&A session. Was this done in conjunction with the dinner? Yeah, so pretty much I'll... uh, is it okay if I just explain how everything went? Yeah, absolutely. Or, However you like. So, <laughs> so we got there for the dinner, and um, it was, like, very private. Uh, we were away from, like, the public. Um, there was a downstairs, upstairs. We were upstairs. And um, they had Ambie there doing uh, the interviews. Are you familiar with the Ambie girl? Yeah, I watch her all the time. Okay, so she was there doing interviews with, like, EC3, uh, Josh Matthews, and all of them. So we were there for that interview, and then um, we got to order our food. We ordered whatever we want on the menu, and it was free and because it came with our ticket. But then after everyone ate, um, it was like face paint time. I was the first one to do the face paint with Rosemary, and Rosemary pretty much just found out when she got there that uh, Taya, Taya wasn't able to come. So she wasn't aware of what she was going to do at the pay-per-view. I asked her, but she wasn't aware. Um, but she was super, super cool, super upfront, and just very easy to talk to. Um, I don't know if you know this, but I used to wrestle. Um, I wrestled for five years. So we were just kind of going back and forth with our injury stories. So she was pretty cool to talk to about that. And um, after the dinner, um, EC3 sat down with us and, we had a private Q&A with him and us, and then after him was um, Eli Drake, and then Moose. Moose and his, his brother came right at the end, um, the one who came out rapping for him. Right. Was the so, uh, was uh, the dinner at, uh, I was going to say Crate and Barrel, was it at Crescent Crate, or was it? It was. Okay, so you tried the Impact Pizza? Um, okay, so with me specifically... <laughs> I couldn't eat anything really on the menu because I'm I'm technically vegan. Um, so I just I'm not eating any meat. And um, even if I wanted to have a cheese pizza, I'm lactose intolerant. So the dairy would have messed my stomach up. So I tried a pizza with no cheese, just sauce and vegetables. And it was not pizza. So I didn't eat it. <laughs> but At least got there were some people. <laughs> yeah, so I wasn't really able to eat, but everyone else around me was ordering the Atomic Drop um, drink and the Impact Pizza and then other random pizzas there, too. Um, they had, like, a Crust and Crates special pizza that they do frequently, and then they had the Impact Pizza, but everyone said the pizza was really good. Um, I was just sitting there watching them eat the delicious food that I can't eat. <laughs> but, <laughs> Did you try to um, drink or do you not drink? I, see, I'm super, super lame. I don't even drink alcohol. So, yeah, I'm not the one you call when you want to go to the bar because I will order water. It, it's not that lame. I just started drinking five years ago, and I don't, I still don't even drink once a year. You know, it's just something I, yeah. I do casually, but it wasn't until I was about 33 that I started drinking. So, no big deal. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I pretty much couldn't eat, drink. I had like, um, I had a little Pepsi, but then after that, I just had some water. Um, so after Moose and his brother came, uh, Caleb Conley came, uh, uh, Eddie Edwards came, Mackenzie Mitchell was there, uh, Josh Matthews was there, of course, uh, Ed Norham came at the very end, um, the guy, uh, what's his name, Ross Foreman? Mm-hmm, yep. He- I met him. He took care of us really, really well while we were there. You said that he um, he gave a couple of you his phone number, right? Because you traveled so far? Yeah, so he actually just gave it to me um, with his phone number. And um, 
because I traveled, it was with me. I came from Colorado. My friend came from Chicago. And my other friend that I met up there, he came from the UK. So we all traveled pretty, pretty far to to get there. And um, we were the furthest, the only people that traveled the furthest to be there, like the most miles. Um, so he he was just so surprised and he was very like happy about it. He, and he was like, you know, people like you, is why we work so hard because we know that you guys are out there and we want to make sure we we keep this product alive for you guys so it was really 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 cool that's really cool i absolutely would have made the trip but um i'm out of town on work so it just wasn't something that was possible but uh i, I really would have loved to be there so i'm jealous you got the opportunity <laughs> but uh but i think that's really cool and uh I, I was at the last bound for glory last couple slam anniversaries so this is the first one i'm missing in a little hey, while. I was so. at last year's Bound for Glory too. I didn't see you there. Yeah, I, I didn't see you either. I I, th I think I remember. On, I I guess we weren't talking as much on Twitter at the time. I do remember you saying you're going, but I don't think we were uh, we were as close or whatever. But um, yeah. yeah no. So um, w I don't know. Wait, I don't know if you remember. Last year, I was handing out all the the broken section signs and the obsolete section signs. Oh, were you? I always sit on the non-camera side of my family, so I can have, we can have chairs. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not, the I'm, standing side sucks. I'm not one for standing. My uh, my feet and ankles <laughs> and everything. My time in the military have gone to crap, so I, I really can't oh. stand for too terribly long without being in pain. So I'm not really. Yeah. I did slam anniversary um, last year standing, and I I was dying. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm flat footed, so any walking hurts my feet. Oh gosh, yeah, never never again. <laughs> um, I yeah, yeah, I have no problem being off camera if I can sit down. But uh, so um. Q and A session, um, and we talked a little bit about the Q and A se session offline because yeah. some of the some of the questions are a little more private than others. But um, is there yeah. anything you want to want to talk about um, regarding Eli Drake and EC three and Moose and and the Q and A? Um, okay, so when Moose came in, Moose was the third person to sit down with us. But when he was there for a few minutes, uh, Laurel Van Ness walked in. And I don't know why, but I got like super starstruck and I'm like, oh my God, she is so beautiful in person. And like whatever Moose was saying, I ignored what he said and I like just acted. I don't know. I don't know what the hell is wrong with me, but I just put my hands up in the air like I was a baby for her to hold me in her arms. <laughs> and and right. I'm like, Laurel. And then I'm like pointing at her and then she points at me and I'm like, I came here for you. And she's like, I came here for you. <laughs> and it was super epic. And I bet Moose felt like shit because I like spoke up and I said, oh, my God, I'm starstruck. But when he sat down, I was just calm about it. So I think he probably was feeling some type of way. Um, but, yeah, she walked in, Laurel Van Ness, and she was like, ah, oh, she was so beautiful. And, you know, when you see her on TV with the crazy makeup and then see her without it, and it's like, whoa. Like, I'm super gay, but I would go super straight for her for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. But with the EC3, he sat down with us, and we all got our turn to ask questions. And um, one of the questions I was asking is, how can we get back to where we once were? Um, because at one time, TNA at the time, Impact was a true number two alternative. There was no no doubt about it, and no one can say shit about it. I don't care what no one has to say. But they were a true number two, and he debuted it. So when he debuted, I was actually there at the 2013 Bound for Glory when he debuted it. So that's kind of how we started talking about it. But um, it really boils down to is um, the network that they are currently on is available mostly in like 80 – million homes but the network is still not known it's not like a uh, a name brand like if you have your choice to pick a nike brand or a great value brand you know most people are going to choose nike because it's so well known so it's kind of that's where pop is it's not well known for people to really search for it or to even know that it's a part of their cable package so it's really about awareness of the product. And then he said it really boils down to the negativity and for people to have their own opinion instead of following other people's opinions because 
it's the cool thing to do or you know how about he was just saying people should just start tuning in to have their own opinion instead of getting other people's opinion and making it their own opinion yeah and it drives me nuts and i mean you you see there ju- just off them posting your photo the the negativity that comes with it so there's a lot of negativity to overcome and and i mean it's sad that, sad that we're in a time where you can't just like what you like without uh people attacking you for it yeah, like the Twitter thugs yesterday where they were going crazy on me. And, and I, I just pretty much say, like, whether if it's like Law and Order, Will and Grace, uh, any kind of TV show, you don't hear much bashing. Because if you don't like a specific TV show, you just don't watch it. But with pro wrestling, they're so vocal, like, oh, screw Impact. Impact sucks. They don't got no money. They don't do this. And it's like so much bashful hate going on. And it's like, if you really truly don't like the product, don't watch it. Why speak about something that you don't like or why speak about something that you don't even watch, which makes no fucking sense. Sorry if I'm cussing. I don't know if you need to edit that out or not. <laughs> Curse okay, all you want, no biggie. These Twitter uh, thugs are yeah, crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Um so let's talk about Bound for Glory a little bit. Um real quick. Yes. Can I say something about Eli Drake? Yeah. Okay, so Eli Drake sat down, and we pretty much was asking the same questions, and he pretty much gave us the same answers. However, with the world title, he did say that they're in the process of making him a brand new world title. So the championship belt that he currently holds will be most likely a brand new belt going into 2018. All right, that's good to know. Um, (laughs) Because a a picture surfaced online yesterday, and it still has the GFW um, plates on the side and then it almost looks like it just an impact sticker over the front uh, not a plate like the other other titles so uh, so his title looks like that i didn't i didn't ask him too much about it it doesn't look like a good plate like cns plate or the tag titles plates those ones look really legit but his looks a little just off yeah um, but his does still have the gfw logo on the side as well right Things like that take time, so um, look, yeah, look, look. it does. And belts are expensive, like at least five thousand dollars for a custom-made belt. Yeah, and that's probably just on the indies. I, I would imagine um, the the larger companies pay quite a bit more for them. So, oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, let's get into Bound for Glory, and uh, how many people? I, I mean, not obviously you can't count that many people, but. Would you be able to give an estimation? Um, I've kind of heard 3,000 is the number that was in there. I mean, do you think that was a oh, safe estimate? 3,000? Yeah. Because um, remember, Impact Zone holds about 1,100 at capacity. So would you say it was double that? Yes, for sure. Um, you know, I, I, I always say it was well over $1,000 or 1,000 people. Well over 1,000 because... They were so packed where they even sold standing only tickets. So there were people standing in certain sections because there was no seats available. So the the crowd was so, so much more than the impact zone. And I've been there before, but it, it was so like, um, I've been a fan since 2002, 2003 and to see them go up big, to go really low, and then for that night to see them how big and how many people were there, it really made me feel like a really proud fan. Like, oh my God, every single person paid a ticket to be here. There was no comp, there was no free tickets, nothing. Everything was 100% paid for at Bound for Glory when it comes to the fans. And it, it was just an awesome, awesome sight to see. And the crowd was just so into the show. Everyone, it felt like everyone was invested in the show, Yeah, in the pay-per-view. One thing I was a little disappointed with the camera angles is that when we watch Impact from week to week, and you know, I've been there and I understand, I know where the camera comes from and it comes from all these different angles and, and you know, up in the sky and everything. They didn't really do that at Bound for Glory. They just kind of focused on the ring. And it's kind of unfortunate because when you watch Impact, sometimes it starts scanning around and even scans areas where there's like nobody at all. And they have like no shame, yep. no shame doing that on TV. And, <laughs> and here yeah. I wish they would have scanned and, and really looked at the sea of fans a little bit, a little bit more. I think what the problem was is 
I think all of the cameramen were brand new. And I don't think they brought the camera crew from where they usually have in Orlando with them. Yeah, I, I don't think so either. Just just watching by ringside, I can see the camera guys uh, lost at times mm-hmm. and just not sure what to do. So I can tell that's just inexperience. So I knew that that they weren't the crew from Orlando. Yeah, there was a there was the uh, when when Sammy Callahan did the run in, the the ang- the uh, cameraman didn't catch him at all. Um, they. they they when when he got to the ring did the pile driver on the table and everything that was one thing but when he attacked uh, Conan and everything was the the announcers put it over but we didn't actually see what see what happened so um, uh-huh. so the one thing I want to ask and uh, you I, I know you haven't really seen Bound for Glory yet like on the app or anything like that or like fight or anything like that but the crowd to us as the viewer was was very quiet. Um, I talk about a lot that I have an ear for audio compression and everything. I know that the the levels of the the uh, announcing and the commentary was much louder than the fans. And and I tell people you got to take that in consideration. Listen to the entrance music when wrestlers come out, or when wrestlers were in the ring screaming, and you could barely hear them, but you can hear the announcers crystal clear. So you know people need to understand that 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 is an audio issue that I, I really wish they would um really work with, but. For your, you know, your experience, you were there in the front row. What was, what was the crowd volume like and the crowd in general? So when the show was over, I was hearing that the crowd was quiet online. So I saw some videos in the crowd on the videos that I've seen online were really, really quiet. And I really think it might have been the audio issue um, just because they're in a new place where they're not used to the Orlando scene where they know everything goes, where everything is. All the employees have been there for quite some time. So when the pay-per-view happened, I think it's pretty much all new people, all new camera people. um, So mistakes were going to happen. But when I seen this past Thursday's episode, the audio was fixed. Oh, yeah. But in... At the pay-per-view, I've been to quite a few Impact shows, and that pay-per-view was the loudest I've ever heard it in in a, a, for an Impact show. It, even I've been to WWE shows, and that's the loudest I've ever experienced the the audience. Uh, it was so loud. Every single person was saying something. Every single person in there was cheering, yelling, booing, clapping. Um, every single match was pretty, everyone was full focus. The only match I can say was the, the match that wasn't even advertised. I, I can't even remember. Uh, I always call him the Ninja Turtle guy, the Japanese guy with the, yeah, the Ishimori and Tyson. Shorts. Yeah, Ishimori and Tyson Dukes, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't think anyone really paid attention to that match just because Laurel Van Ness walked out. And I think everyone was so focused on her, mm-hmm. no one even paid attention to that match. But the crowd, I'm telling you, I lost my voice. That's how loud I was screaming. And and just to keep in mind, I, I'm still 100% a fan, but I also I have five years experience of wrestling myself in a ring and in front of people. And I know what goes into a wrestling match and goes into a wrestling show. So for a person like me, you would think I wouldn't be wanting to cheer or, you know, because I I feel like I know I have that experience where I know what goes into it. But me being there, I was so into it. It was so it like caught everyone's attention. And it's that kind of I call it like a little magic. A lot of wrestling shows don't have. And it's just I wish I wish that it it caught on camera because I knew those Twitter thugs were going to go complain about it. Yeah. Um, but with that even being said, the X division match, the crowd was super loud for that. So I would imagine there in the arena was probably deafening for that match compared to the others. Oh, well, Petey Williams came out. So everyone was going crazy, which is to me. I should, Trevor Lee should have been the last person now and Petey should have been the first but that's just nitpicking. But they were loud for that. And, um, and honestly, they were loud for every single match. Even the Monsters Ball, I heard you say you weren't really 
feeling the monster's ball, but the crowd was feeling it. Like they don't show it on camera, but when they started bringing out the the chairs and the trash cans, and then the, when the barbed wire boards came out, like everyone made a reaction. It was like, oh my god, and it was pretty pretty cool. And then when Grado fell down through the the table. That got a huge reaction. Rosemary came out. That got a huge reaction. And the whole choke slam got a reaction. Even the botch ring bell, it, no one really like paid attention to that. It was like, oh, oh, the match is still going on. Yeah, the match is continuing. Like people were excited that it was still going on. Right, right, okay. But it it was still everything. Everything was. I'm. Uh, I just wish. You know what? I recorded some videos, so maybe I can send them to you so you can see how loud it was. Yeah. Um, when LAX came out and that guy jumped from, Santana jumped from the scaffold into the table, I was right there recording it. And that was loud. That was crazy. Every time LAX came out, even for the tapings, everyone stood up on their feet, standing the whole entire match when LAX was out. Wow. LAX is huge, like over. I was yeah. That was my next question for you. Who who was over uh, with, with the talent as far as the talent goes? Um, I think uh, I think just because we were in Canada, obviously Petey Williams and um, Gail Kim were over. Um, but honestly, everyone was really excited about Eli Drake, and um, people were cheering uh, uh, the X Division champion uh, Trevor Lee. Trevor Lee, I don't know where my mind went blank, but Trevor Lee got a reaction, but he was trying to get a, a bad reaction, but it wasn't really working. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Yeah, everyone was like, Trevor! And then he was like, shut up! And they're like, I love you, Trevor! And it was just, like, funny. Um, <laughs> you know what? Who really didn't get a loud reaction was Alberto Al Patron. People were mixed about him. Mm-hmm. Like, some people clapped, some people booed, and some people were just silent because they just didn't know. Um, was was his promo in ring promo? Um, and and the UK fans are lucky because they cut this out of the show. Um, was it was the in ring promo in person as awkward as it came across on on TV? Um, you know, you probably got. I just saw the back of his head, so I don't know how his face looked and awkward he was. But just the statement that he made of. I was innocent and they didn't pay me. And I just think it should have been, I just think it should have been different because he just went on a, um, the interview with Ross saying, Oh, I, it was my choice to get suspended. I suggested me being suspended. And then he comes back out and says, they suspended me. Like, <laughs> right. That made zero sense to me. Like, and I think, I think they just let him go and do his thing. Instead of saying, here are some key points, let's try to follow this. And I think he rambled on. Yeah, he wasn't and He wasn't prepared out there. No, not at all. I've, I've done enough public speaking to know that. So then seeing the impact taping this Thursday, they edited his promo at the end, which was I'm glad they did because he said some remarks that wouldn't have showed a very – it wouldn't have showed impact in a very good light. Um. And I'm glad they edit, edited his promo for Thursday's Impact because it was me and my friends in the front row all looked at each other like, oh, I cannot believe he just said that. Like, mm-hmm. that was that was too far. He shouldn't have said that. Right. And I'm glad they edited it out. But I can tell you that off off this. OK, cool. Definitely. <laughs> um, what was the crowd reaction like to the way that he inserted himself into the main event because i me personally and everyone i knew i was i was in the um fight tv the fight app i'm sorry chat with velvet sky and all these people everybody knew he was coming to ruin the main event i think we knew that before bound for glory even started you know oh for sure so what was the what was the reaction to him um you know coming coming out there so two things i think he should have never did the promo I think if he was interfering in the main event, he should have just interfered and it be done. No promo because it kind of just gave it away after the promo as well. But his reaction 
when he first came out was like meh and then the second time he came out because of how like um aggressive he was with the chair he broke the chair off of johnny impact's head like that was insane and it was a plastic chair plastic chairs hurt way more than the metal chair and you would think metal would hurt more but plastic hurts worse because plastic doesn't bend the metal will bend and it gives a little leeway but so when he broke the chair everyone was like like gasping and was like oh my god and like holy shit chance happened and he was just so aggressive and like johnny impact came and jumped over the top rope and hit the ref and like the ref legit hit the guardrail so that was intense and everything seemed super real like when it was happening so that got a reaction of how intense it was and with like sorry to track back but like with the cage match with bobby lashley and uh moose that uh who was Moose's partner? Stephen Bonner. And then uh, King Mo. They legit were not wrestling. They were legit fighting. Like, in the arena, you can hear the smacks on his face. And you know how sometimes people smack their thigh to make it sound a certain way? Right. That was none of that going on. It was literally fist to face or elbow to face or forearm to face. And it was just like smack, smack, smack. And it was like people were like, gasping on that like oh my god this shit is real right now and <laughs> yeah and like king mo got his head cut open from one of the punches i think yeah oh that, that was intense but like the whole el Tron thing interfering i don't think anybody was disappointed that he interfered but i think of uh, the intensity that was happening people were like oh my god this shit feels legit like feels real um, so I don't know how it came across off of TV, but um, I, I, I think they probably should have went a different way. So another thing I want to ask about, because we're talking about crowd reactions, Sammy Callahan and Jimmy Jacobs, The uh, I want to know if on the Tron, the big screen, if they actually showed um, these guys' faces or anything like that, because you know watching on TV, it looked like zero crowd reaction to both guys, but I can also understand that if they could not see these people's faces. Also, the angle that Sammy Callahan came from, you know, the majority of the uh, crowd is on the other side of the ring, so it's not like they can ex exactly see. What about the reactions um, to Sammy Callahan and uh, Jimmy Jacobs coming out, and, and did people know who they were? So with me, I don't really watch independent promotions that often. Um, so I really didn't know who Sammy Callahan was. But when he came in the ring, I didn't even know where he came from. He was just there. Um, so I didn't really know who he was. But then I heard people chanting, yeah, Sammy. And like he got a reaction. Um, but I think the reaction he was trying to get was booze. And um, there was quite a bit of people who knew he who he was. And it was already teased that he was coming, but I just didn't know who he was. Right. So he didn't get a reaction out of me. But um, Jimmy Jacobs came out during before the Moose match. Um, so when this is happening, the cage is coming out from the like where you see the crowd. The cage is coming from the side. So no one could actually see Jamie Jacobs come out because everyone's watching the employees put up the cage. And then on top of that, they're new employees. So they're putting the cage, they brought it out wrong. They're supposed to come out with it at a certain angle for it to just go up. So they had to come back and forth, turn the cage around and uh, one of the cage almost fell on us. And like everyone's just so focused on these employees with the cages that no one really saw Jimmy Jacobs come out. So then Jimmy Jacobs, I saw him come out, but I'm like, is he an employee? What is he doing? Because he first came out just scratching his neck. Like, what the hell is going on? And I thought he was scratching his head because the fucking guys almost dropped the cage on us. Mm -hmm. And the camera didn't even see it. So he's like scratching his head, squinting his eyes. I'm like, this guy better fix the problem. And then um, I figured who jimmy jacobs was like i used to watch roh way back in the day and and i i believe didn't he used to wear like pink him and his group used to wear pink together I, when he was performing for roh i didn't really watch it i, I i've only had okay. like a one maybe a one year period where i watch roh like continually and then it's always, okay. always been really casual 
<laughs> yeah, I was super casual, but I, I, I think they were in a group together and I remembered his face. I'm like, oh, okay. But then he went to the camera side or the um, the announcer's table and then they put a light on him. And um, then people saw him and there was people in the crowd chanting Jimmy Jacobs, clapping their hands. So people knew who he was. And then even the next night at tapings when he came out, he got a bigger reaction. Well, he got a reaction because the other one, we didn't see him come out. Um, but everyone at the next night of tapings was chanting his name all over, like, Jimmy Jacobs. Like, he got a loud reaction. So, Yeah, I heard that. I heard that on the on the taping. So um, let's get into the tapings. Is there anything else bound for glory? Or you, I mean, you went to one night of taping, so we're going to get into that a little bit. Is there anything else bound for glory we should, uh, we should talk here? Sienna pretty much dropped Ellie right on the stairs, and that was pretty epic. I was right there to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, the LAX match, like, again, everyone was just standing on their feet the entire time. Um, the merchandise table, the people were there for, like, over an hour getting LAX shirts and um, Eli Drake shirts and Impact shirts. The um, the merchandise booth did really good. Um, what else? What else? It, overall, it was just a really, really good show, and I would put it on top of one of their top, top shows, like at least top five as a crowd reaction, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so Bound for Glory was really, really good, and it felt like a good um, wrestling show, and then the next night felt like a TV show. Yeah, now, do you mean that in a negative way at all, or you just mean it was two different? Um, it was two different vibes, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Bound for Glory was like match after match after match. And um, as to the next set at, uh, for Monday, it was like, okay, guys, we're filming a commercial and you guys are all in it. So everyone get rowdy. Um, I didn't too much care for that part of it. But um, then when they would go into one match and then JB would get on the mic and said, okay, we're coming back commercial three, two, one. And then the crowd would go crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so it just felt more um, TV instead of like a wrestling show where they're just running match after match after match. And, you know, it was like, OK, we're done with one segment. Now we're back from commercial next segment. And it didn't feel like a flow of a show. Right. So when I watched like Impact this past week, uh, yesterday, I didn't realize the whole fight of El Patron versus Johnny Impact was the end of the episode. So that because there was so much more during that night, I didn't know that was the end of episode one. <laughs> right, right. Or, you know, the first week. So it, it was um, just the flow was different, you know. And then we had uh, people wrestle twice in the same night. So um, OVE wrestled three guys, um, but the guy in the green pants he wrestled earlier in the show, like for Explosion, mm -hmm. and then he wrestled again for the OVE match. Um, trying to figure out there was another person who wrestled twice sanjay wrestled twice uh most of the x division guys wrestled twice so and the the event for the tv tapings was like four hours long so it was like from seven at night to midnight so it was very hard to keep the energy alive yeah absolutely yeah. uh the time the times i've been there usually about three and a half hours and and i know towards the end it's it gets pretty difficult. Um, uh, that's crazy. Four hours is a, is a long time. Yeah. And I think it was a little longer than four hours because I think it started like right at 730 and we didn't get done until uh, right at midnight almost because then at the end of it, uh, they had a one night only taping and it was just it was too much and it felt like um, all over the place. So, like, with Bound for Glory, you knew, okay, this match is next, this is coming up, that's up, okay, we're, you know, but, like, with the tapings, it was, like, this guy wrestled, and he's wrestling 20 minutes later, and then, but it's, like, ah. <sighs> it's hard to follow, and then when you're in the arena, you don't, you don't really know the storylines and stuff, because there's, you know, backstage segments and everything that don't necessarily play it over the big screen, so sometimes you don't understand. I, I always talk about the time that... I was there, and Eli Drake came out to wrestle uh, Grado, and Jesse Goddard came out with him. 
and then literally 20 minutes later the bromance redebuted and, I, and it was <laughs> the craziest thing in the world i was like what you know so yeah um, so that's the only thing that i can criticize i'm not saying that uh impacts the worst we're doing that because lucha underground tapes that all of their they did a, a whole season a year ago you know what i'm saying so yeah they they're not the only ones that do it but i just didn't like the flow of it as um me personally speaking only for myself because the people surrounding me were still having a great time was still excited but me just in the knowledge that i have um I'm just like, why? I don't. Why would you do it this way? Maybe it could have been done better. I'm just analyzing shit because, you know, I used to wrestle for a promotion here for five years, and with that promotion, I helped run it. I helped uh, with the training school. I, you know, traveled through the uh, cities wrestling for other promotions. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, just when you get in the flow of your own things, and then you judge someone else's thing, it's like. You know, it's like KFC has their fried chicken. Popeye's has their fried chicken. They're not the same, but they're still fried chicken. You just have your own thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but so it was still great matches. The crowd was still into it. Um, the thing that they did play on the big screen was the Alberto fight with uh, Johnny Impact. That's good. I was hoping which, so. Mm-hmm. Which was a good thing. So we, we knew why they were fighting. But... Um, the crazy thing is I was actually backstage while they were filming the fight, which was pretty cool. Oh, really? Yeah. So the, um, Ross guy, he brought us backstage. Um, we got to meet Sienna and LEX and those are the only two I really wanted to meet because I met everyone else at the dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so when I got to meet LAX and Sienna, they were filming that fight, and um, it was it was pretty cool. Like, JP was recording the outside part of it, and then when they came inside, it was a camera guy's recording. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was pretty epic that... Uh, did you see how Johnny Impact just, like, flew through Alberto and through the curtain and almost hit McKenzie? You know... I have to go back. I I, um, I turned away for a second because I was watching on my phone, um, and I was doing so. I turned away for a split second, and I and I and I missed exactly when he dove at him, but I saw enough of it. So I, I want to go back and see that part again. But it was epic. Like it, like he literally almost knocked over McKenzie. He like their fight felt so real. Yeah, and that's the stuff that I like. There, I. So I'm like super, I'm a hater when it comes when they bring into WWE guys. Like, I, I was upset that they brought in Al Patron because I'm like, they're going to fucking give him the title, like, because he's Alberto. Like, yeah. screw that guy. And then they brought in Johnny Impact. I'm like, another WWE guy. But even though he hasn't been in WWE for quite some time, I still register him as WWE. And I was just mad about it because I... I just rather love Impact more than WWE, so I'm like, screw WWE. But <laughs> when they were fighting, I was like into it because it felt so real. I'm like, oh my god, like they are really going at it, like going in on each other, like they're like shooting on each other. That's how I felt. And and then I had a uh, inboxed you while I was there, and I was like, you remember there's reports of Braxton Sutter not being in Canada. And I told you he's actually here because I saw him during the fight. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, he's actually here. So, yeah. But I just want to, you know, tell you about that. But the fight was real and they aired it on the, the big screen. So um, after they aired it on the big screen, then they started coming out uh, in the arena, which felt even more real. Like Alberto hit him through the steel steps, which almost hit us. And like, it just felt so real. Like they were going in on each other. Mm-hmm. And I just, I like that. Cause sometimes wrestlers, wrestlers look fake. So I really like when it looks legit. Yeah. I, I thought, I thought the fight looked real, really good. But overall the experience was good. Um, the fans enjoyed themselves. Um, I just think the pay-per-view compared to the TV tapings was a whole complete different flow. Right, right. And uh, that's just me being picky and me choosing a different fried chicken than the other type shit, you know? Yeah. Would you say that the, um, 
you know, I know you said it was four hours of tapings, but would you say that, you know, towards the end of the night, even though the energy might have gone down, that it was still, it probably still was better than what we see weekly in the impact zone? Oh, 100%. 100%. Okay. How, how many people would you say, now, as someone who's been in the impact zone like me, impact zone tapings, usually about 300 people in there. By going off that benchmark, how would you, because I couldn't tell last night, I could tell there was more people. Um, but what would you say? We think 500, 600? I, okay. So I think the Monday tapings was a little weak. Um, I would say maybe, honestly, like honestly, I hate to say it, but it might have been around 300 to 400 for Monday. But you have to keep in mind, I think Monday is a hard day to do a wrestling event just because the next the day before they were just out until 11 o'clock at night, almost midnight at Bound for Glory, then the after party. Then these people have to go to work the very next day. And, you know, it's just that Monday. Mon I think I just think Monday is a hard day. So the Monday tapings was all really diehard fans. Um, but I heard the Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday tapings were a lot bigger. I have my friend is still down there and I was asking him about the crowd size. He said it was way bigger than Monday's crowd size. All right, that's good. And the Monday, it still came across pretty good on TV. You know, obviously it wasn't the Bound for Glory size, but it I, oh, I felt uh -uh. like it, you know, it came, the crowd was a little, you know, they had the lights down and everything, but um, yeah, but you could tell there was more people there. Oh, yeah, for sure. And those three to 400 people were way louder than the six, 700 people at Universal. Yeah, you know, um, I I was there last year, the night after Bound for Glory, and I totally agree with you. I think Monday is a very bad night to tape. We uh, There was probably 200 people there that night. That was by far the worst crowd I've ever seen in the impact zone. Um, and it was, I was there. Yeah, and it was crazy because the night before it was still packed out. And I remember they even started a little bit late. They started with the fact that life segment in the very back, you know, trying to get it to fill up a little bit. And, you know, a few more people uh -huh. came in. But, yeah, that was um, – that's what I was telling my wife. I was like, dude, th th this um, – this Monday night is not a good night, not mm -hmm. good, not a good night to film, and that was the night Eddie yeah. Edwards won the title. So it was unfortunate that it wasn't, you know, front of a small. But room. you know, when he won the title, he got a loud reaction though when the title when he won it because everyone knew that he was no way in hell going to win it. So yeah. I think a lot of people weren't really invested until he got the three count, and then everyone erupted like, "Oh my god!" Like. This is legit happening. <laughs> yeah, I, st I remember st uh, standing up in my seat, and I was I was standing for what seemed like an eternity because I was it was a legit mm -hmm. shock. Yeah, like we all knew that wasn't going to happen, and I was like, right, you know where they come out the entrance way? I was right there on the right hand side where the chairs are. So I was right there, and I like it happened, and I was like, <sighs> like I didn't even cheer. I just like gasped. I'm like, how did? Why did? Like, so many questions in my head. Like, why didn't EC3 win it yesterday? This makes no sense. There's no story. But, oh, my God, he beat him? Like, what the hell? Wait, you were on the no, on the non-camera side in the chairs? Yeah. That's where I was, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, we you, you might have been. So, you know how they put those stickers, like, reserve seatings? Yeah. I, I just took the sticker off and sat down. So, you probably would have been behind me. <laughs> but, I'm like, I, I traveled from Colorado to come here to Florida. So, I'm not sitting in the back. And I paid for a VIP ticket to a free show, so I'm sitting in the front. Yeah, I always, I always pay too. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, like um, the crowd reaction still for the three to four hundred people was loud. Everyone was diehard fans, and and it felt like they were diehard Impact fans. Mm -hmm. And it, it was so good to see that Impact had that reach there. You know. Yeah. So o overall, the show the show was good. Everyone, the crowd was very into it. I'm just picky when it comes to certain things, and that's just my own opinion, and I'm not out there posting it on Twitter saying, oh, they suck for this or they suck for that because I have a different opinion on how they run stuff. So the last thing I want to ask you, obviously we saw Impact last night, and then you stuck, stuck around for you know the rest of that evening, which was next week's, ta ne next week's taping. I almost knocked my yes. computer off there. <laughs> um, did you feel like the show I last night when I was watching it, I felt like the show was delivered 
better than it had been the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah. Did, did you just feel like a different vibe, like they were doing something different, like maybe more focused on in-ring? Because that, that was what I got last night. I felt like, okay, they're, they're a little more focused on in-ring. You know, there's some talking segments, but it's not – I don't know. It just, it all felt like it glued together and made sense. I mean, did you just get a different vibe can, can, you know, compare to, to me, it felt, it felt like, um, you can tell there was a new, uh, creative team running the show and it felt like their old slogan, like total nonstop action. And it felt like that's what they were giving us with a little here and there. Um, I think, uh, with the, uh, the workers, it just put a little extra pep in their step that they're not in Orlando. And I think I, I spoke to everyone about it. Every wrestler that I talked to, every employee, I talked to impact employees that no one ever sees or even knows about. Um, everyone was ecstatic to be out of the impact zone in Orlando, just because normally anytime they go back to the impact zone, the first night, the crowd is loud. Yeah. And following nights, they're just quiet. Um, so and I think these wrestlers had just an extra pep in their step because they're wrestling in front of um, paid fans instead of the free fans in Orlando. And some people buy the VIP packages. I know um, I have a few Twitter friends and every time they go, they buy the VIP package, but majority doesn't. And I think these fans had a different appreciation than the other fans that come for free. Mm-hmm. Um and I, I, I just, again, to repeat myself, but I think the wrestlers just had a little extra pep in their step and gave the fans a little extra more. And even with the guys who wrestled twice, still wrestled like it was their first time wrestling that night because of the fans and the energy that it was given to them. Right. And it, the energy, it's like, because when I used to wrestle, if I wrestled in front of a quiet crowd, I, was, I would get very upset where I feel... Um, not confident in myself like what am i doing why aren't they reacting then i would mess up in the ring or i wouldn't give it my all in the ring because they're quiet but when you have that energy and that rush of a loud crowd you want to do an extra uh, extra jump or an extra this or and you just have that extra energy because it's like a drug you you're you're feeding off of them um so when you're wrestling in front of a quiet crowd you can't you can't get that extra oomph right and and the wrestlers can take that few extra seconds to sell and everything because they're not feeling awkward because the people are still fairly engaged and everything. So, you know, those few extra seconds of sell, so they don't have to rush and and everything. So, yeah. So, um, but yeah, good stuff, man. I'm I'm really happy to hear all these things and and sounds like it was a great experience and, uh, hope the listeners enjoy hearing. Yeah. I went to WrestleMania last year and that by far was the worst experience I've ever had when it comes to wrestling and bound for glory tops wrestlemania in my opinion i could be biased because i prefer impact but i still went to wrestlemania and spent hella money to go to a wrestlemania and that was to me horrible compared to the bound for glory so there's just a different magic going to impact you know the reason i really like taking my kids there is because you know we always get to meet the wrestlers and they always treat us really good and so my my wife is um my wife is uh is disabled and so she's not in a wheelchair okay. or anything like that but when we go there we do kind of need some extra attention and um you know because she needs she needs to basically be uh, to have a clear path out of the um arena if she need, if she um kind of has an emergency or or something like that yeah so they've always taken really good care of us to the point, even when I buy my tickets, they already know my name and they say, you know, they've emailed me, Hey, you got your, your seats reserved on the non-camera side and everything. So they always take, yeah. they've always taken really good care of us. And you know, the couple of times I've taken my kids to like a WWE event, it's like, okay, the show's over. Now we're going home. And, and they, they kind of want that extra, well, we're not going to meet any wrestlers or anything like that. You know, we, we don't get that experience. Mm-hmm. And even no. even the one time I did an autograph signing with Ryback, you know, it was like a uh, assembly line. I mean, they you walk by, they sign, they said, "Don't take a picture with the wrestler. You want a picture, take it while he's signing it." You know that that's what wow. they that's what they told us. Oh yeah, I Impact definitely goes the extra step to make you feel special because you bought a ticket to see them. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't make me feel that they're better than me or I'm less than them. You know. Yeah. And uh, I met EC3 twice, and the second time he was just 
just awesome. And he was hella tired at the end of the show, but he still took the time to talk to us and meet us, take pictures. And just everyone there, every single employee there, I have nothing negative to say about any employee at all. They all showed me great love. They knew I traveled quite a distance to come there and they took care of me and my friends. And it was just a, an overall, like an A plus experience. Like it was awesome. All right. Glad to hear that. Well, thanks for talking Bound for Glory and the tapings. And um, to everyone here on the channel, hit that subscribe button. And I will do my best to talk to at least uh, one or two more people who were there and, and just get more more insight, more opinions and um, on everything going on with Impact and how Bound for Glory and the tapings were. So, all right. Talk to you guys next time. Peace. All right. Yeah, that was good, man.